a video going over the Chapter 5 test review to help you get prepared for your test. The first part of your test is going to be verifying trig identities. And for verifying trig identities, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get this left side to equal the right side. So you do not touch the right side at all. You just manipulate the left side so that it equals the right side. You have the trig identities formula sheet, so you can go ahead and start to make any sort of substitution that you can. Uh, cosine and sine are your basic trig functions, so we're not going to change those. But I can change tangent to uh, sine over cosine, so I'm going to start there. So I'm going to write this as cosine of theta plus sine of theta, and then tangent is sine of theta over cosine of theta. And again, my goal is to get this to equal secant of theta. Um, I'm going to go ahead and combine um, sine times sine. So I have cosine of theta plus sine squared theta all over cosine. And what I have is I have two separate things that I'm adding. And what I need to do is I need to condense it to a single fraction. Because again, if I look at my goal, my goal is to get one trig function. And right now it's separated with addition. So in order to add fractions, we need a common denominator. So this is the same thing as cosine over 1. So to get my common denominator, I'm going to multiply this fraction by cosine over cosine. That gives me cosine squared plus sine squared all over my common denominator, which is cosine of theta. And one of your Pythagorean identities says sine squared plus so cosine squared equals 1. Um, so that means my numerator is 1. My denominator is cosine of theta. And 1 over cosine of theta is secant of theta. And we just verified the identity because our goal was to get secant of theta, which we did. For number 2, anytime you see anything raised to the 4th and you're subtracting, that's a difference of squares. So what you should do first is you should start by factoring it. So sine to the fourth minus cosine to the fourth, that factors to sine squared theta minus cosine squared theta with sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. And again, let's pay attention to our goal. Our goal is to get sine squared um, theta minus cosine squared theta which is exactly what we have over here, so we're making some progress. So sine squared plus cosine squared, this one, if I look at my um, formula sheet, um, that's one of your Pythagorean identities, and that equals 1. So now I have sine squared theta minus cosine squared theta times 1. Well, anything times 1 is itself, so that leaves me with sine squared theta minus cosine squared theta, which is exactly what we were looking for. Identity verified. Alright, number three. So number three, I can go ahead and change the cosecant to 1 over sine. So I have 1 over sine of x minus sine of x. Um, again, if I look at what I have, I have two things that are separated with subtraction, but my final answer just has um, things together with multiplication. So that means I'm going to have to add these two fractions together. So sine of x is the same thing as sine of x over 1. I need a common denominator, so I'm going to multiply this one by sine of x over sine of x. And that leaves me with 1 minus sine of x times sine of x is going to be sine of x squared all over sine of x. Now in my numerator, I have a 1 and a sine squared. And we have one of your Pythagorean identities that uses a 1 and a sine squared. That's this one. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. And so what I want to do is I want to rearrange this so that it says 1 minus sine squared. So I'm going to subtract sine squared from both sides. So that gives me cosine squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared. So that means this numerator that I have is really cosine squared of x over sine of x. Okay, so if I look back at my goal, I need a cotangent times a cosine. And if I look at my numerator, I have cosine squared. I can write that as cosine of x 
times cosine of x all over sine. Well, I now have that cosine of x that I'm looking for. And if you look further, I have cosine of x over sine of x, that is cotangent. So now I have cotangent of x times cosine of x, which is what our goal was. Number four is another one that we want to factor. So I'm going to factor that to tangent squared theta minus secant squared theta uh, with tangent squared theta plus secant squared theta. And what I can do is I can go ahead and use one of my Pythagorean identities. So let's see, the Pythagorean identity that uses tangent squared and secant squared is this one right here where it says one minus tangent squared theta equals secant squared theta. And let's see, so let's see how I can rearrange this. Uh, Oh, that should say 1 plus tangent squared. Confused myself for a second. So 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared. Uh, let's see. So I can do a tangent squared minus secant squared. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract secant squared from both sides. That leaves me with 1 plus tangent squared theta minus secant squared theta equals 0. And then I can move the 1 to the other side. So that leaves me with tangent squared theta minus secant squared theta equals negative 1. So that means this right here is equal to negative 1. Now for my second parenthesis, um, I have tangent squared plus secant squared. And if I look back at my goal, my goal is to have everything in terms of secant squares. So that means I got to change this tangent squared to something. So I'm going to go back to this identity and I'm going to solve for tangent squared. Well, in order to solve for tangent squared, I would have to subtract one from both sides. So that means tangent squared is really secant squared theta minus one. I can combine like terms in the second parenthesis, so that gives me negative 1 uh, secant squared plus secant squared is 2 secant squared minus 1. Distribute. So I have negative 2 secant squared theta uh, plus 1, and I can rearrange that, so that gives me 1 minus 2 secant squared of theta, which is exactly what we were looking for. The next part of your test is going to look at trig equations. So the first thing you need to do is isolate your trig function. So I'm going to get um, sine squared by itself. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides and divide by 4. And then to undo a square, you square root. So I have sine of theta equals, and anytime I take the square root, that's going to be a plus or minus. And I don't know what the square root of 3 is, so I'm just going to leave that as the square root of 3. And the square root of 4 is 2. So I am trying to find the angle um, that would give me sine, which is my y coordinate, to be root 3 over 2. So I'm going to go ahead and use my hand trick. Sine is my y coordinate, so my y coordinate has to be root 3 over 2. And in order to get that, I would have to put down my index finger which is going to be pi over 3. So sine is my y coordinate, and I need it to be positive or negative root 3 over 2. So that's going to put angles in all four quadrants, since it's plus or minus. And my reference angle, go ahead and make a note, my reference angle, was pi over 3 from the hand trick. So that makes this pi over 3, this pi over 3, this pi over 3, and this is also pi over 3. And my answer for theta has to be all of my angles in standard position. So I'm going to start by finding this angle. That angle was pi over 3. To get from here to here, that angle is going to be 2 pi over 3. 
going further along, that is going to be 4 pi over 3. And then finally, all the way to my fourth angle is going to be 5 pi over 3. And since the directions say to find the angles within the interval of 0 to 2 pi, um, that is going to be your answer. You don't have to worry about the plus 2 pi n or anything like that. That's for all solutions. All right. Uh, cotangent, uh, let's look at tangent first. So anything that's reciprocal, um, change it to the original trig function. So if you have cosine or cosecant or cotangent or secant, change it to the original three trig function. So the cotangent, I'm going to go ahead and change to tangent. So tangent of theta is going to be a negative square root of 3. Now tangent is negative in two quadrants. Don't forget tangent's your oddball because it uses both your x and your y coordinates. So my first quadrant, it's positive, positive. Second quadrant's negative, positive. Third quadrant's negative, negative. And fourth quadrant is positive, negative. So if I were to divide these, positive divided by positive is positive. Positive divided by negative is negative. Negative divided by negative is positive. Negative divided by positive is negative. And what we wanted is we wanted tangent to be negative, so I'm going to be in the second and the fourth quadrants. Now, for the hand trick for tangent, you are going to, instead of looking at the palm of your left hand, you're now going to look at the back of the left hand. And I'm going to start putting down fingers until I have three fingers on top, one finger on the bottom. So when I do that, I'm putting down my index finger. I'm going to put my hand back in its normal position, and then that angle is pi over 3 again. So that makes this reference angle pi over 3, and this reference angle also pi over 3. So my two answers have to come from standard position. So going from here to here, that is pi over, or 2 pi over 3. And from here all the way around is 5 pi over 3. And there are your two solutions for that cotangent problem. All right, number seven, I'm going to isolate my trig function. So I have cosine of x equals, I'm going to subtract the square root of 3 and then divide by 2. So I need cosine to be a negative uh, square root of 3 over 2. Well, cosine is my x-coordinate, and my x-coordinate is negative in quadrants 2 and 3. So using the hand trick, I'm going to put down my fingers until I have root 3 over 2, so three fingers on top, root 3 over 2. Oh, and that's for my x-coordinate, because cosine is my x-coordinate, duh. So I have three fingers on top when I put down my, uh, what finger is that? That's my ring finger. And that angle measurement is pi over 6. So that makes this pi over 6, and this is also pi over 6. All right, so angles in standard position. That right there is going to be 5 pi over 6. And from here to here is 7 pi over 6. If you ever get confused on that, you can label your pi. So pi in terms of sixths is 6 pi over 6. So that's where those two answers come from. All right, so those are equations within the interval 0 to 2 pi. Now when you're looking at equations for all solutions, that's when you're going to add your 2 pi n to your answers. So you're still solving it the same way that you normally would solve an equation. So now I'm going to find um, sine being root 2 over 2. So sine is y, and y is positive in these two quadrants. My reference angle would be my middle finger when I put that down, because that gives me root 2 over 2 for my y coordinate, and that is pi over 4. So this is pi over 4, and this is also pi over 4. So normally you would just write down your two answers. So we have this angle being pi over 4 and this angle being 3 pi over 4. But since we want all of the solutions, I'm going to write this as 2x equals uh, pi over 4 plus 2 pi n, since it's all solutions. 
And my other one is going to be 2x equals 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. Now I'm going to divide everything by 2 to get my x by itself. When I take pi over 4 and divide it by 2, that gives me pi over 8, because it's the same thing as multiplying by a half, plus pi n. And then for my second one, dividing everything by 2, that gives me 3 pi over 8, plus pi n. And that's for all solutions. For number 9, I'm going to look to see that I have a cosine in common, so I can factor out a cosine of x. So I have cosine of x times cosine of x plus 1 equals 0. Now this one you're solving by factoring, so that means you're going to set each factor equal to 0 and solve. So for the first one, I need cosine of x to be 0. Well, cosine is my x-coordinate, and my x-coordinate is 0 at this point and this point. So my angle up here is pi over 2, angle down here is 3 pi over 2. So that means my solution for x is going to be pi over 2 plus 2 pi n and 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. For my second one, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. That gives me cosine of x equals negative 1. So my x-coordinate is negative 1 over here, and my angle for that is at pi. So that means x can also be pi plus 2 pi n. So again, the reason why I'm adding 2 pi n is because this one was to find all of the solutions. All right, um, sum and difference formulas. So I'm going to rewrite this instead of cosine of 75 whoops I'm gonna write this as 135 minus 60 and I'm going to look at my formula sheet to find cosine where I'm subtracting two angles and then I'm just gonna follow that formula to be able to simplify this expression so then this is my u and that's my v so I have cosine of u cosine of v plus sine of u, just following the formula on my formula sheet, sine of v. Now if you look at your angles, all of these angles are in degrees, so if you would like to use the calculator trick to work out these problems, you can. Just make sure your calculator is in the right mode. So this one has to be in degree mode. And I'm going to type in cosine of 135. That gives me negative 0.707. So in order to use the calculator trick, you need to memorize a couple decimals. 0.707 is equivalent to root 2 over 2. 0.866 is equivalent to root 3 over 2. And of course, we all know 0.5 is equal to 1 half. So cosine of 135 gives me negative root 2 over 2. Cosine of 60 gives me 1 half. Sine of 135 gives me a positive root 2 over 2. And sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. Now from here, I just need to simplify my expressions. So that gives me negative root 2 over 4 plus root 6 over 4. And combining that to one fraction, that's negative root 2 plus root 6 all over 4. You can always rearrange that as well to have root 6 minus root 2 over 4. They both mean the same thing. Um, for the next one, I'm going to rewrite this as cosine of pi over 4 plus pi over 6. So now I'm using cosine and, my at, and I'm adding my angles. So I'm going to follow that formula on my formula sheet. There's u and v. So that is cosine of pi over 4, cosine of pi over 6, minus sine of pi over 4, sine of pi over 6. Oh, that was weird. 
and I'm going to use my calculator trick again, but if you notice your angles, they are in radians, so we need to change it to radian mode. So cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. Sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. I can go ahead and multiply those. That gives me root 6 over 4 minus root 2 over 4. I can combine that so it's one fraction. So root 6 minus root 2 all over 4. All right, last one. Well, for the sum and difference anyway. So I'm going to write this as sine of 3 pi over 4 minus pi over 6. So now I'm looking for the formula for sine where you're subtracting. This is your u, that's your v. So that gives me sine of 3 pi over 4 cosine of pi over 6 minus cosine of 3 pi over 4 sine of pi over 6. And these angles are in radians, so calculator is still in radian mode. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug in to get my decimals. So sine of 3 pi over 4 is uh, 0.707, which I remember as root 2 over 2. Cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. Cosine of 3 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2. And sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. And again, I'm just plugging these into the calculator and just remembering which decimals correspond to which radicals. That'll save you a little bit of brain power from having to use reference angles and your hand trick. So right here I'm subtracting a negative, so that becomes a plus, root 2 over 4. Again, going to combine, so that gives me root 6 plus root 2 over 4. All right, double angle formulas. So there is a typo on this problem. It should say, instead of pi right here, this should say 2 pi. And this is the interval in which you are going to draw your triangle. Um, so the 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi represents a quadrant. So over here, this is pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So my angle is in between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, so that means I'm going to draw my triangle in this quadrant. Now what you're given is you're given that sine of u, so here's your u, is negative 12 over 13. So that means my opposite side is negative 12. Hypotenuse is 13 using Sokotoa. Use the Pythagorean theorem to find the third side, and the third side is going to be 5. From here, you're going to use the formulas on your formula sheet. So cosine of 2u has three options. Um, you can do cosine squared minus sine squared. You can do 2 cosine squared minus 1, or you can do 1 minus 2 sine squared. I'm going to go ahead and go with the first one and do cosine, of squared, or cosine squared minus sine squared. And this I'm just going to take from ratios and my triangle. So looking at my triangle, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that is going to be 5 thirteenths. Minus sine, which is negative 12 thirteenths. Going to plug in this expression into my handy dandy calculator. And that gives me negative 119 over 169. Uh, for number 2, sine of 2u. Um, formula for that is 2 sine of u times cosine of u. So my sine is negative 12 thirteenths. Cosine is 5 thirteenths. Multiplying using my handy dandy calculator gives me negative 120 over 169. And then for tangent, you can use the formula sheet for tangent, or since I already know sine and cosine, I can just remember that tangent is the same thing as sine over cosine. So my sine was negative 120 over 169. My cosine was negative 119 over 169. 
my 169s are going to cancel. Negatives cancel, so I have 120 over 119. And you would get the same thing if you used um, the formula for tangent on your formula sheet as well. And that is double angle formulas. All right, half angle formulas. Okay, so the half angle formula, the first thing I need to do is I need to figure out what angle would I need to take half of to get 75. So I can write this as sine of 150 over 2, right? Because half of 150 is 75. So I have my formula sheet um, for sine of theta over 2. Um, that is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine of theta, and theta is the 150 over 2. And to determine if you're going to use the plus or the minus, you look at your original angle, so 75 degrees. 75 degrees is in my first quadrant where everything is positive, so that means I'm going to use the positive. So positive square root of 1 minus cosine of 150. So I'm going to use my calculator for this, but 150 is an angle measure in degrees. So I'm switching my mode to degrees, and cosine of 150 is negative 0.866, which just so happens to be negative root 3 over 2. Over 2. Um, so that gives me square root <coughs> of, let's see, 1 plus root 3 over 2. Now this division by 2 looks a little weird, so I'm actually going to extract that out. Since I'm dividing by 2, that's the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. Um, and then from here, anytime you're multiplying with a parenthesis, you distribute. So I'm going to distribute this to both of them. That gives me the square root of 1 times 1 half is 1 half, plus uh, root 3 over 2 times 1 half is root 3 over 4. And then I need a common denominator, so I'm going to multiply my 1 half by 2. So that gives me the square root of 2 over 4 plus root 3 over 4. I can combine that to get the square root of 2 plus root 3 all over 4. Now my numerator can't be simplified any further, so I'm just going to leave that as 2 plus root 3. But I do know the square root of 4, the square root of 4 is 2. And it's okay to have radicals and radicals, you typically do end up with that with your half angle formulas. So don't think that your answer is so strange um, once you get there. Alright, tangent of pi over 8. So I need to figure out what angle would I take half of to get pi over 8. The other way to think about it is you're taking that angle and doubling it. So pi over 8 times 2 is 2 pi over 8, which reduces to pi over 4. So I have tangent of pi over 4 over 2. So following my formula for tangent, that gives me 1 minus cosine of pi over 4 over sine of pi over 4. All right, so cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Sine of pi over 4 is also root 2 over 2. Now these angles are in radians, so if you're going to use a calculator, make sure you change your calculator to radian mode before you plug it in. Again, I'm going to rewrite this since I'm dividing a fraction by a fraction. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, so I'm going to multiply by 2 over root 2. So I'm taking this bottom one and flipping it over. As usual, let's distribute. So that gives me 2 over root 2, since 1 times 2 over root 2 is 2 over root 2, minus, well this right here gives me 2 root 2 over 2 root 2. So that is just going to change to a 1. Over here I need to rationalize it, so that becomes 2 root 2 over 2. 2 is cancel, so final answer is root 2 minus 1. Alright, so that covers all of the problems on your test review. I hope you found this video helpful.